What's up YouTube? John here with JDS Outdoors. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video is going to be a little informational because I see a lot of questions happening on a Facebook group I follow, Tiny Boat Nation, which uh, is a great Facebook group if you like to build, design, rebuild, remodel boats, etc. Um, much like I do myself. Which, by the way, if you're not following me yet, you should because I'm putting a 155 horsepower motor in that 10 foot boat. I'll show that to you real quick and then we'll get to the purpose of this video. So that little 155 horsepower three cylinder four stroke motor is going inside this 10 foot jet boat which has all the tools on it which is the purpose of this video in how to cut aluminum properly and the different types of tools you can use to do it safely because I see a lot of people saying ways to do this that is very very unsafe now what i'm going to do with this is i am going to go through the different tools you can use in order from cheapest to most expensive for the most part so let's get started i guess so for starters and i know i'm going to see in the comment section i'm going to get a lot of crap for this um this is a handsaw this is not the correct handsaw for cutting aluminum, but I don't ever use one because it is not very easy, fast, nor efficient to use a hacksaw to cut aluminum, but it works. Say you only have to cut one, two, three cuts, it doesn't pay for you to buy anything expensive other than a hacksaw. So this is just for example, you use a, a handsaw to cut the aluminum. And it works if you need it to. But like I said, I know this is the wrong one. Now, another easy, budget-friendly way to go is an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. Now, whenever you're using any of these tools, especially cutting aluminum, make sure that you have eye protection and ear protection because chunks of aluminum fly all over the place, get in your eye. It's not fun. And it's also very loud. So make sure that you are using the proper PPE and keep yourself protected when you're using any of these tools. So an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel on it works great. The downfall to doing it with an angle grinder and this type of blade is it makes quite a bit of dust and the cut isn't is clean. It's not dirty, but it's not as clean. So that's really the only downfall. And these blades tend to wear out quickly um, if, you, if you're cutting a lot. So make sure you have quite a few blades if you plan on doing a lot of cutting. Next, fairly inexpensive, easy to attain metal cutting device is going to be your jigsaw. This works just fine along with a sawzall. I'm not going to show what a sawzall looks like. Because I feel like it's in the same category as a jigsaw here. Um, jigsaws work good for cutting aluminum. As long as you're doing short cuts or detailed cuts. If you have to cut around ribs. Um, if you have to do a circle for like a bilge blower outlet. Things along that nature. If you're doing long straight cuts. This sucks. It takes forever. It's slow. But it does make a nice cut. Also, make sure you're using the proper PPE when you use that. Now, for tubing. If you have a lot of tubing to cut, and money's not a problem with buying tools, a portable bandsaw is a lifesaver. It works great. And they're not that expensive. So, I mean, it's a good tool to add. For, for cutting aluminum especially. You can use it to cut steel. Uh, you can use it to cut your neighbor's brake lines. Things like that. It works. Works great. Uh, the blades. There's many different uh, TPIs you can get. Which TPI is teeth per inch. Um, it depends on the type of material. That you're going to be cutting. Uh, works great for tubing. It's downfall is, is. You can't cut very large. Sets of tubing. Or pieces of tubing. You have to use this for for the smaller dimensional stuff and you can't really use it to cut sheet unless it's a thin sheet long and it fits in here 
So that's its downfalls. But it does do a really good job, clean cuts, nice straight on uh, all sorts of different types of tubing. And now we're going to go to my favorite, one of my favorites, I guess, for cutting uh, for aluminum sheet, tubing, all around. This is a great, great tool, and that is your circular saw. Um, now, circular saws, you're going to see a lot of people giving really bad advice about these. Uh, one of which is to take this blade and turn it backwards so you're cutting with the back side of your carbides. No, aluminum is not vinyl siding. That is not a good idea. And the reason it's not a good idea is because these little carbides right there, you're going to be hitting the back side of those, pulling away against the adhesive that holds that to the blade. And why is that bad? Because when this thing's spinning that however many millions of RPMs it goes, and you're hitting the back side of that, and that thing goes flying, if it doesn't hit you, that's good. But if it does hit you, it's going to hurt. And it's going to hurt bad. So you're going to sit here and knock all these teeth off, send them flying. Maybe they'll hit your neighbor's brake line. And then you're, then you're in trouble. So, bad idea. Never turn these blades backwards. They're directional. Unless, like I said, you're cutting vinyl siding, which is, that's what you're supposed to do. Have them backwards. But for aluminum, keep them forwards. Now, this is the Diablo uh, non-ferrous cutting blade. Uh, designed to cut aluminum, and between this and a wood blade, I don't really notice that much of a difference. I mean, there's a little bit. This is a little faster, but you're not going to go fast to begin with. So just take your time. Make sure this gets up to full RPMs before you start diving into the metal. That's my tips with uh, your circular saw. Now, my other favorite for cutting tubing and whatnot is... The miter box. And much like the circular saw, the handheld, you don't want to turn the blade backwards on this either. Same reasons. When th things spinning at 2 or 3 million RPM, stuff's going to fly all over and the carbides are going to fall off and end up in your eye. So you don't, that's just horrible, horrible advice. But this works great for cutting tubing. I have this sliding compound, uh, it runs off. It, it, it's brushless, flex volt, so you don't need a cord. I got it hooked up to the cord, but that's not the point. It works good for cutting all kinds of tubing and such, so I, I'm, I'm going to show it. I use it quite often when I'm building my aluminum fish houses, and I've used it a little bit on the boat here uh, for cutting the, um, the angled stringers down at the bottom. Like I said, I do a lot of metalworking, and if you're not following me, you should, because there's more cool stuff like this coming. So that brings me to another point. Cutting angle aluminum on the miter box especially. So the proper way to cut the angle, because um, I see a lot of people these days ordering um, ordering kits from like Nate's Custom Boats, things along that line, and, and that, that's great. Them kits are awesome. They, they help the DIYer get into uh, customizing their boat for a reasonable price. But you got to cut aluminum, and you got to cut angle. And if you use a miter box, this is how you want to have your angle put down. You don't want to cut it like this, because if you cut it like this, and that carbide catches this corner right here, that goes flying. And then it wrecks your blade, and it sends pieces of things flying all over the place. You want to have it mounted flush in the corners, just like this. And you want to go slow. You want to wait until this blade is at full RPM. And then you slowly bring it down into the aluminum. And it's also a very good idea to have this clamped down to your, um, your bed here. You don't want that to come flying up. And you especially, if it's mounted like that, it'll definitely come flying up. So that's a safety tip. Always have it tight against this and if for some reason I don't know why if this wasn't mounted like this or you can't mount it like this mount it like that with a piece of wood stuck underneath here and make sure it's anchored tightly because you don't want that to come flying 
And finally, for the most expensive piece and way to cut aluminum, but by far my favorite because you can make some cool stuff, is the plasma cutter. And then if you take the plasma cutter and pair it with the CNC plasma table, you can make cool things like that. that that's a pike or a muskie, mostly a pike. That's cut out of aluminum. And it was cut on this table. And this piece right here is a dash piece that I cut for my uh, my jet boat. And, it, and it, it cut that whole piece out in seconds. And it would take you probably the better part of 30 minutes to cut all that out on uh, using a, a, your assortment of saws, using your skill saw, your jig saw, and getting it all measured out. And this did it very efficiently and very quickly. But I know that this piece of equipment right here is pretty far out of reach for a lot of people. Um, and it was for myself for many, 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 many years of working with aluminum. So with that being said, I mean, it's, it's, you can build stuff like this with minimal tools. You don't have to go spend a ton of money to cut aluminum when just the basics will do. A hand saw, a jig saw, saw saw, and a circular saw. It's really it. But if you're only going to be doing a couple pieces here and there, a hand saw and a jigsaw work just fine. Just takes a long time with the longer, straighter cuts. So hopefully you found this a little bit informational. If you want to see more about the jet boat, I got more videos coming out on that here very soon. It's going to be something, something to see when it's done. So follow along if you want. Otherwise, thanks for watching. JDS Outdoors.